Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 552, Mayberry Days Trivia 2019 Qualifying Round. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. It's Halloween time as I'm recording this, so don't forget to head over there and pick up an old man Prince Rimshaw print. Uh, these are great. Just be careful. Those eyes will follow you around. You also might want to get the 2020 Mayberry Day-by-Day calendar. It's a flipbook calendar. Every day is a different Mayberry fact. Head over there and check that out. And new at Weavers is country ham and, I mean, country ham, country bacon and pepper bacon from Mayberry's Finest. Go over there and check it out along with the Mayberry Finest coffees. And it can be yours as well. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you. The executive producer of today's episode is Ken Junkin. That's right, Otis Campbell himself. And he shops over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. I know that. And uh, I'm sure his his chapter of the Andy Griffith Show, Rio and Watchers Club, is the hearty eating men and beautiful, delicate women. <laughs> so I know they've got to have some of that bacon. I'm talking I'm stuck on the bacon because we had some the other night, and it was good. Yeah, Jan cooked it, and uh, there's even a picture of what she cut. Let's see if I can show. It's a picture of what she cut, uh, cooked. <laughs> I can't talk tonight. Of what she cooked on uh, for us here at the house. It was good stuff. So go over there and check it out at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Hey, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs, and I know you're bored out of your mind because I'm just blathering, but tonight we're going to be doing Mayberry Days Trivia. That's right, trivia from the Andy Griffith Show. I know you're going to enjoy it because it's a lot of fun. Now, let me explain how this kind of works. For Mayberry Days, there are there is a qualifying round, and that's what we're going to be doing this episode, qualifying round. There are two other rounds, or one, well, it's one, The anyway, we'll go into that. First round is the qualifying round. That's what we're going to do tonight. If you qualify in this round, if you win or place or show normally first two or three spots, you get to play in the Mayberry Days finals. That's right. You get to be a part of the uh, World Championship of Mayberry Trivia. Now, the World Championship Trivia is the champions of past Mayberry Days, all the past Mayberry Days champions, plus whoever qualifies in this round as well as the youth trivia winner. Okay, so there's a youth trivia that happens right before this qualifying round. If there's enough space, we normally let them uh, be a part of the qualifying round as well. All right, so all that doesn't really matter. Tonight, we're going through the uh, the qualifying round trivia. All right, so is everybody ready? So I'm going to play a little background music by the BW Boys called Mockingbird. There's our trivia background music, and we are ready to play Mayberry Trivia. So get out your number two pencil, and let's see if you can get these things right. All right, Mayberry Days Trivia from 2019. Now, again, this is the qualifying round. Qualifying round trivia, and it's brought to you by Weaver's Department Store, by the way. (laughs) Question number one. Question number one. How many boys in the county of Mayberry are part of the underprivileged children? How many boys in the county of Mayberry are part of the underprivileged children? Okay, so that's the question. Do you know the answer? Go ahead and uh, spout it out there if you think you know. Folks in the chat room are going for it. Now, I will tell you that the answer that was given as correct at Mayberry Days was actually a typo and incorrect. The correct answer is 400. 400 children. There's 400. That's uh, one and a half boys per square mile. <laughs> 400. Okay. All right, 400. The, at the at Mayberry Days, they mistakenly had typed it wrong. It said 480 and uh, anyway, so nobody got this question right. So you have an opportunity to get it right. So our trivia winner for this year, the qualifying round winner, uh, got 14. So this was a, probably the only one he missed. All right. So you okay? So how many boys were there? There were 400. Okay. So you got that. Next question, number two. Number two, ready to go. Here we go. In episode, in the episode, a feud is a feud. What are the names of the couple that comes to Andy as Justice of the Peace? 
in the episode A Feud is a Feud, what are the names of the couple that comes to Andy's house as the justice of peace to get married? Okay? All right, everybody. If you don't want to know the answer, and uh, you can stop the podcast and try to think of it. The answer is Josh and Hannah. And that's from uh, A Feud is a Feud, obviously. Josh and Hannah were the name was the name of the couple. All right. Uh, next question, number six, uh, number three, <laughs> number three, what is Ralph Campbell's wife's name? What is Ralph Campbell's wife's name? Hmm. Okay. If you don't want to know the answer, we'll just go ahead and pause. But the answer is Ralph Campbell's wife's name is Verlene. Berlin and her and that was on episode number 63 of the Indy Griffith show number four there's 15 questions by the way 15 number four what does Andy give Fred and Jenny Boone for successfully graduating from his counseling sessions what does Andy give Fred and Jenny Boone for successfully graduating from his Counseling sessions. Mm, okay. The answer is, pause if you don't want to know the answer. The answer is sweet cider. Sweet cider. Some folks in our chat room were getting it. I see them getting it. Good job, folks in the chat room. Sweet cider. That was on episode number 18. Number five. How many pounds of beef did Aunt B purchase? From a new butcher shop, Diamond Gems, uh, that had just opened in Mayberry. How many pounds of beef did Aunt B purchase from the new butcher shop, Diamond, Diamond Gems, that had just opened in Mayberry? All right. Everybody's giving their answers. You can pause if you don't want to know the answer, but here's the answer. 150 pounds. 150 pounds. Call the man, Aunt B. That was in episode number 120. 120. So how are you doing? We've had five questions. Have you got five? Are you keeping up with your score? All right. Number six. How much does a Sunday cost at Walker's Drugstore? How much does a Sunday cost at Walker's Drugstore? Mm -mm. That's good. I'd like to have a Sunday. That'd be pretty good. A Sunday at Walker's Drugstore... It'll run you 10 cents. 10 cents. That's from episode number 24. Episode number 24. It's 10 cents. Number seven. Who told Aunt B about a car in the courthouse? Who told Aunt B about a car in the courthouse? Oh, that's a pretty hard one. Hmm. I don't think I know the answer. All right, so pause it if you don't want to know. The sad part is I just wrote these up today, into the, and I still didn't know the answer. The answer is Eleanor Schroeder. Mrs. Schroeder. Eleanor Schroeder. That's from episode number 144. 144. Hmm, that was good. I didn't see anybody get that one in the chat room. So how did you guys do? Okay, how did you do? All right, episode number eight. What year did Barney first meet Thelma Lou at Wilton Blair's funeral? What year did Barney first meet Thelma Lou at Wilton Blair's funeral? What year was it? Ooh, that's a tough one, too. I know because I, I just did it today. Some folks in the chat room are getting it right. I see them. So the answer is, pause if you don't want to know, 1960. That's from episode number 131 of the Andy Griffith Show. There we go. That's number eight. All right, number nine. Number nine. As a child, Barney sat on the hood of his uncle's car and had his picture taken. What was the make of this car? As a child, Barney sat on the hood of his uncle's car and had his picture taken. What was the make of the car? Oh, this is tough. I see one in the chat room. I see a couple getting it right. The answer is... A Hudson Terraplane. 
Hudson Terraplane. That was from episode number 121. 121. Good job. Hudson Terraplane. Folks in the chat room, we're getting that right. I see them. The next question is number 10. We've only got five after that. So let's go. Let's see how we're doing. Here we go. Number 10. Floyd Lawson owns a shaggy dog. Name his dog. I'll do it in the voice. Hey, Floyd owns a shaggy dog. Hey, name, name his dog. What's the name of his dog? Hey, Floyd has a dog. He has a dog. Hey, what's his name? Do you know his name? All right. So there's your question. And Floyd's dog's name is Sam. It's Sam. Sam's his name. His name. Yeah, that's from episode 50. Number 50. Yeah, Sam. All right, number 11. Number 11. Aunt B has a very dear friend named Minnie who has a beautiful daughter. What is Minnie's daughter's name? Aunt B has a very dear friend named Minnie. She has a beautiful daughter. What is Minnie's daughter's name? What is Minnie's daughter's name? All right. The answer is not Mouse. The name is Gloria. That's from episode number 151. Her name's Gloria. It's not Minnie Mouse. Why would she? Why would Minnie? Her last name would have to be Mouse. You know, people in the chat room. Gloria is her name. Number that was number 11. We only got 15 questions. Number 12. Number 12. How many times did Goober hit and ring the bell at the county fair? How many times did Goober hit and ring the bell at the county fair? How many times? The answer is, pause if you don't want to know the answer yet. The answer is 18 times. He hit and rang the bell 18 times. That's uh, from episode number 182. 182. I see one person that got it right in the chat room there. Good job. Number 13. How many blades are in Opie's friend, Trey Bowden III's knife? How many blades are in Opie's friend, Trey Bowden? He's the third, Trey Bowden III. How many blades are in his knife? And that's the question. How many blades are in Trey Bowden's knife? All right. The answer is, here we go. The answer is nine. There's nine blades in Trey Bowden III's knife. Nine of them. That's from episode number 110. All right. Two questions left. How are you doing? You got 12, 11, 1. <laughs> I don't think I I wouldn't get most of these, so you guys don't feel bad. Now remember, this is just the qualification round for being in the final rounds of Mayberry Trivia. All right, so number fourteen, number fourteen. Who does Andy say always wins the sack race at the church picnic? This one's kind of hard, I think. Who does Andy say always wins the sack race at the church picnic? Hmm, boy, I really don't have any idea. And I just wrote it <laughs> this afternoon. That's, boy, that's sad. Who does Andy say always wins the sack race at the church picnic? Well, he says it's Jim Summers. That's from episode number seven. All right, our final qualifying round question. Number 15. Who once arrested Barney's father for speeding? Ooh. Who once arrested Barney's father for speeding? Oh, that's a tough one. Yep, I can't remember his name. But I know if you'd have looked real close at his badge, there was a, there was a manhole cover on it. <laughs> so who once arrested Barney's father for speeding? His name... His, his name was Freeburger. It was a man named Freeburger. That's all we know. Freeburger was his name. That was in episode number 106. All right. So how did you do? 
How'd you do, guys? All right, so that was the qualifying round. 15 questions. 15 questions and answers. I hope you guys did pretty well on them. It was uh, it was pretty hard. Those are not easy. Not easy at all. Uh, but that lets you qualify. Now, if you had gotten 14 or more right, 15, I think, we'll go ahead and the guy this year had 14. That means he got them all because we had one question that was incorrect. It was a typo. So he, he did really well. Uh, so how'd you do? How'd you do? I, I wouldn't have gotten very many either. I, I think I could have gotten six or seven, maybe. But I, I honestly, I'm not that good at the trivia. I know how to look up trivia. <laughs> That's my job. All right. All right. So let's see. Now we get to go and in for a real treat because we're going to hear from Randy Turner. But stick around at the end. I've got a little bit of feedback that I want to share with everybody that I saw. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. It was over on Facebook, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's about Mayberry Day, so it'll fit in perfect. But let's go in here from this week in Mayberry history. Uh, Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Woody Chambliss may have been best known for his role in Gunsmoke, but he also appeared in The Andy Griffith Show in both the black and white and color years. Born Woodrow Chambliss in Bowie, Texas on October the 14th, 1914, Woody attended Baylor University in Waco. In 1938, he traveled to Dartington, England to study drama at Dartington Hall, a medieval estate that houses a charitable trust dedicated to the arts and social justice. He performed with Michael Chekhov's theater company, which had been established at Dartington in 1936. With developments in Europe heralding war, Chekhov moved his company to the United States and recreated his school in Connecticut. Woody continued with the company there and made his Broadway debut in a Chekhov production of The Possessed. The play opened on October the 24th, 1939, but ran only 14 performances. Woody played one of the lead characters, but the playbill had no biography of his career up to that point. As Chekhov's position was, his company did not and never would have stars and that all members of the group were equal regardless of the parts they played. The play also included Woody's wife, Erica, in a small role. The theater company lasted until 1942, but by that time, Woody had left. After leaving the Chekhov Theater Company, Woody worked at a naval construction yard during World War II. After the war, he and others from the company, including Ford Rainey, later best known as playing the adoptive father of Steve Austin in The Six Million Dollar Man, formed their own theater company in California. Called the High Valley Players, the repertory company toured productions for four years in and around Ojai, California. Woody also made his film debut in a small and credited part as a pub patron in the 1946 film Three Strangers. The High Valley Players lasted for four years. To make ends meet, Woody also worked for a water company. He eventually became the manager of that company and left acting for a time. In 1957, Woody resumed his acting career, making his television debut in an episode of Oh Susanna, which is sometimes referred to as the Gale Storm Show. That same year, he also appeared in Sugarfoot and had two small roles in films, including as a blacksmith in 310 to Yuma. He also appeared for the first time in Gunsmoke. In 1958, Woody had his first recurring role, playing Captain Tom, the captain of a riverboat owned by the title character Yancey Derringer in nine episodes of the series' only season. Woody appeared in episodes of Perry Mason, Lassie, Death Valley Days, and others, 
before first appearing in Mayberry in 1965. Woody first played the unfortunate Orville Hendricks, the tailor's friendly butter and egg man, before Clara's meddling led to Aunt B claiming to be seeing him, not knowing he was actually married. Later that same year, Woody returned in a color episode as Harlan Robinson, who had an organ the Mayberry Church was interested in purchasing. After appearing as five different characters in Gunsmoke between 1957 and 1965, Woody first played shopkeeper Woody Lathrop in the Western in 1966. This recurring character is likely the role for which he is best known. He played the character 33 times between 1966 and 1975. Woody continued to appear in film, episodic television, and TV movies over the next six years. He was old Sgt. Pepper in the 1978 film musical flop, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That same year, he played the grandfather in the TV movie Forever, starring Stephanie Zimbalist. This film is notable as his wife was played by his real-life wife, Erica, in her only filmed non-stage role. Woody also played Grandpa Walton's cousin, Zadok Walton, in a 1980 episode of The Waltons. Woody's last role was in the made-for-television movie, Through the Magic Pyramid. Woody filmed his role before he passed away on January the 8th, 1981. The movie was not released until December the 6th, 1981, 11 months after Woody had passed away at the age of 66 from cancer. Through the Magic Pyramid has been retitled The Time Crystal in subsequent airings. This movie was the third television movie directed by the young director, Ron Howard, who followed the production up with the 1982 hit film Night Shift, starring Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton, which took Ron's directing career to the next level. And as a final Mayberry connection, Through the Magic Pyramid was written by Rance Howard. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Uh, thank you, Randy. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of the great things that Randy's doing online, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com. Turnersgrade at gmail.com. And he'll make sure you don't miss out on any of the fun stuff that he is doing, including making calendars and all kinds of stuff, uh, books. I've got his book right here, Mayberry First. You can get it over at Weaver's and the calendar. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com. <laughs> Check it out. Thank you again, Randy. Uh, we also uh, got a voice, not a voicemail, a, uh, a, a letter and, and a written feedback from Lydia. Lydia wrote this in. She said, Chief, I recently heard on the radio talk show that she was listening to a story that says most Americans have made, haven't made a new friend in five years. They haven't made a new friend in five years. Wow. Now, this was an actual story. There's a link to it. I'll try to put a link to it in our show notes, but it is to the New York Post. So they often block things. If too many people have looked at it, you know, they want you to pay them, I think. But I'll try to put a link in there. But it's a it's basically about people that have not made a new friend in five years. She goes on to say, I know we Mayberians know that number. Uh, so. You know, we just say it in our head, five. He says five, five, just like she did. All I can say, though, is bless their hearts. I come away from our meetups, the Mayberry meetups we have, with our with new friends, and I come away from Mayberry days with new friends as well. I know I'm not the only one. What makes it so easy for us and not the average American? I can only think of one reason, the Andy Griffith Show. When you can walk down Main Street and approach a total stranger with a line from the show and they respond back, why, right there is the start of something. When you meet these people who give you their seat for some reason and they give up a seat for someone who needs it or uh, they those folks who specialize on folks who need specializing in, why, 
those are our kind of people and they don't struggle to make friends. It makes me incredibly sad to think that the non-Andy people around me take five years to make a single friend. When I think of the many friends I've made within a span time of five years compared to the average person, it boggles my mind. More proof that the world needs more Andy. Carry on, special friends. You know that you are loved and you're a friend of mine. Wow, thank you, Lydia. That is really true. Wow. Yeah, that article from the New York Post, the people can't make friends in five years. Can you believe that? That is just an incredible number to me. Uh, five years. So I will put a link in the show notes to that so that you can go and see it uh, as well. Because it, it just is crazy. Five years, the America, average American has not made a new friend in five years. That is, that is just more than I can imagine. So, wow, we are blessed, folks. We're blessed. You and I, Mayberry fans, getting to see people at Mayberry Days, getting to be a part of all these different events. Just like last week, we talked all about Mayberry Days. I think we've really been blessed to be able to meet one another and get to know one another all because of some show that's almost 60 years old. Wow. What a great, great testament that that show has allowed. So, friends, I hope you have enjoyed the show this evening or today, whenever you're listening to it. I would love to hear from you, just like I heard from Lydia. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415, or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. Or, if you can't remember those, just go over to twochairsnowaiting.com. There's all kinds of information there about how to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. And the other people who listen to this podcast would like to hear from you as well. I know they would. So, folks, have a great Mayberry week. I hope you did good on the trivia. And stick around the next few weeks here. We'll start doing the championship rounds of Mayberry trivia. Oh, it's going to be big. We'll talk to you then. Have a great week. And we'll see you next time.